Good morning. The Lord be with you. It's good to see everyone here this morning. Welcome to this uh, All Saints Sunday. Today is a day that we pause. We pause from the busyness of our life, from all of our doing, and just remember. We take time to remember, to recall that great cloud of witnesses, all those saints that have gone before us, those who have preceded us in glory. And we remember their deeds, we remember their accomplishments, we remember them. We honor them. We honor their sacrifices, their faithfulness, their hard work. And for just a moment, we are invited to put on our rose-colored glasses. Put on your rose-colored glasses and look past the mistakes and the missteps of previous generations and instead focus on whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, to think about these things. Today, we remember the glory of what has been in order to better imagine what can be. And that's exactly what's happening in that reading that we just we heard this morning from Haggai. Um, the year is, is 520 BCE. It's om almost 20 years, 18 years have passed since the exiles began to return from Babylon. They've been coming back from Babylon. And the temple, the temple that they came back to rebuild, that was their specific charge, go back and rebuild the temple. That temple still lies in ruin, almost 20 years later. A few of the people, the elite, the well-connected, have prospered. They're living in fine houses. But the, for the majority, these last 20 years have been hard years. They've been difficult years. They, According to the prophet, the people have sown much but harvested little. They eat, but never enough. They, they drink, but never their fill. They are clothed, but they are never warm. And the wages they earn seem to disappear like coins stored in a bag with a hole in it, which sounds like my savings account. Um, and they are each, each and every one of them, are so preoccupied with just trying to get by, just trying to survive, that they have no time for temple building. Each one is, is looking only to their own interests while ignoring the greater good. God's temple can wait. It's all they can do just to keep food on their plate. Or at least that's what they seem to believe. That's what their actions say. Haggai's job, which, you know, Haggai, you probably don't even know where that book is in the Bible. It's such a little book. And, he, you know, his whole career as a prophet lasted four months. He was not Jeremiah. Four months and he was gone. But he had a job. And it was important. His job was to remind the people of what can be, of, of possibility, to help them to imagine a better way. And he does that by, he helps them imagine the future by reminding them of their past, of who they are. Um, he asks the question, who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Is it not in your sight as nothing? Well, the truth is, is that the temple has lain in ruins for nearly 70 years. 
It's been almost 70 years since the Babylonians first came in and destroyed the temple. So there are very few people, if any, who actually saw it, who are still living, who actually saw it in its former glory. But the memory is alive. The memory persists. The people have all heard the stories. In Babylon, while, when they were in captivity, uh, the older people would, would sit around and tell stories about Jerusalem and about the temple and how wonderful it was. All those vivid descriptions had been passed down to the next generation. They remember the glory of the former days and they are discouraged. They remember what was and they look at what is and they cannot imagine what could be. They're discouraged because they have forgotten. They have forgotten that there was a time before Solomon's temple. The temple wasn't always there. There was a time before Solomon's temple was built. They have forgotten that there was once a time when they were slaves. They were slaves in Egypt until God liberated them. Until God sent Moses to lead them out of captivity. They have forgotten that they were a landless people wandering in the wilderness until God parted the waters of the Jordan and ushered them into the promised land. They have forgotten that with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. And somebody should say amen, because it's true. You know, that's what amen means. It's true. With God, all things are possible. Therefore, the prophet speaks, saying, Take courage. Take courage, all you people of the land. Work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. According to the promise that I made when you came out of Egypt, my spirit abides among you. Do not fear. You know, it's easy to, to look back with a kind of a nostalgic longing on the good old days. To remember what now may seem like better times. When we were greater, when we were stronger, when we were wealthier. To look back on those times, it's very easy to look back on those times and to despair that we will ever be what we once were. That we will be great. It's easy to get caught up in that that day-to-day -day struggle to survive and to forget, to forget that God has a plan for us. And that plan is to prosper us. That plan is that we would thrive. But here's the thing. The God who called the people out of Egypt is still God. The, the Spirit who embodied those, who, who empowered those, who built Solomon's temple, is still God. The same spirit that dwelled in them dwells in us. And if our temple is in ruin, if our society is in ruin, if our lives are in ruin, Haggai says it is because we have failed to seek the common good. We've looked to our own interests and we've placed those interests ahead of the needs of others. And we have done that because we have, for some reason, we have bought into, we have been seduced by the myth of scarcity and we have ignored the truth of God's economy. God's econ God says, the silver is mine. The gold is mine says the Lord of hosts. The latter splendor of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, 
I will give prosperity, says the Lord of hosts. God created all things, and all things belong to God. The problem, if there is a problem, the problem is we tend to get our priorities messed up. We place our needs ahead of the needs of others. We prioritize our material well-being over our spiritual health and our individual needs ahead of the common good. We allow the demands of our everyday life to overshadow the things of God the things that God has called us to. You know, Jesus taught us a better way, didn't he? He taught us a better way, saying, therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? Your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, And all these things will be added onto you. Friends, take courage. It's easy easy to get discouraged looking around at the world today. But take courage. Remember the glory of the former days, but do not get stuck there. Do not dwell in the past. God is doing a new thing. Remember the saints, all of the saints who have gone ahead of us and take courage, learn from them. The Spirit of God that was at work in them is now at work in us. The same Spirit. And this is the promise. The latter splendor of this house shall be greater than the former. Things will get better, and they will be better. In the meantime, prioritize the work of God, seek the kingdom of God, and God will do the rest. Amen?